dudes, welcome back to another awesome episode of Push the Point. Got my boy. I think you've got to be the uh, longest standing. Uh, yes. Yes. yes so. You're you're the regular. I can't do. I can't. I can't do this without my boy Yorgos. Yes. Yes. I'm five million. I do. Yes. 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 Zinus. The big brain plays. The big brain plays. We did it. We, we do the huge brains here. The huge. Bro, how are you? I'm great. I'm really excited. In just you know a few weeks or something is left for we finally going to see the first uh, Pro Tour with outsiders. So I'm really excited for that. So this weekend Pro Tour's coming up and a very very snapshot because we're here for something totally different we're here for a completely absolutely wild silly crazy we are here being the doomsayers yeah we are here doomsayers of what the meta is going to look like <laughs> on pro tour <laughs> got a quick snapshot but we got we got a dorinthia deck where we've got an extremely spicy card in there and if you've probably seen the thumbnail it might just give you an indicator of what this is but just very quickly Yorgos your your takes on the Pro Tour 3 what do you think who's going to win it what hero is going to take it unfortunately for me I think Oldheim is going to run with it oh interesting okay you think so I think Oldham is going to be like the, the, the best top deck choice I actually don't think Oldham is going to win it I think he's going to be the classic gets into top 8 but doesn't win it <laughs> That's that's my that's my snap short snap dot thoughts. Regardless, everybody, if you haven't checked out Yorgos, he is a consistent streamer on Twitch, and I think you're gonna. I don't know. Are you moving it over to YouTube? And you're gonna be putting some videos out. Well, if you're... Uh, we start putting some videos on YouTube as well. Yeah, probably some clips or you know some meta thoughts and stuff. We I'm going to start getting active with YouTube again. Yeah. Yeah, but in the meantime prolific streamer on twitch so go check him out uh, link is below and uh go listen to the guy screaming uh you know not cheating and what damn it, it, it got, honestly the most animated streamer on um flesh and blood for sure anyway let's move over to corinthia <laughs> with gore belching <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now i swear someone has turned around and said uh gore belching uh with um rouse of the ancient right, is a is a is a thing okay and you went i'm running i'm going <laughs> someone said it for kano and then you obviously just thought well this might work for uh you know oh drinthia right <laughs> i mean from all the from the whole jokes aside i mean the honestly the first thing that came to mind with gore belching was exactly that what if i'm just running a deck with a single copy of gore belching and three copies of rouse of the ancients and no other attacks and probably the first deck that comes to mind has to be kane but warriors are greatly geared in order to have that package in without sacrificing too much regarding other stuff mm. so here we are here we are <laughs> okay so let's just go through i don't we've done a dory deck tech a long time ago and i don't think it's going to be one of those sort of deck techs where we kind of really break down what the hero is trying to do because i think there's plenty of content um out there that pretty much designs what dorinthia is so in a very quick snapshot way if, if you want to explain very quickly what how what is dory in a you know relatively how she works it's pretty much a weapon right yeah, most of the time you're looking to have a way to th at least threaten, go again with your weapon to attack twice, because the rate on Dawnblade is insane if you can manage to attack twice. So most of the time what you want to do is threaten to attack twice and protect your second attack with a reaction to make it harder for the opponent to block. That's the main game plan. If you manage to attack twice for four turns in a row, you probably win the game. But that's yeah. the game plan yeah. pretty simple pretty clean yeah pretty 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 dorinthia <laughs> <laughs> pretty dorinthia yeah okay we've got the old uh classics of uh brace forge braces which has just been a staple card for dorinthia since time began um being able to get that extra additional plus one and the, the armor the battle one too let's say 
So it's, I think it's probably, the, I don't think there is any arm slot that's even comparable to Brayford's Bracers if you're leading to play Warrior. So. And then Crown of Providence, just, you know, Crown of Providence. It's pretty good, right? You're expecting a lot of players to run Command and Conquerors because of Rangers. So that's the main reason you want Crown of Providence over Arcanite Skull Cup or something else at this stage of the meta, I think. Yeah, no, that's fair. So, and Thunder Spring Tunic, I mean, again. The only thing to know that the might, you know, some dedicated Dorinthia players might notice is that we are not running at all the other chest equipment. We only run Fiendel Spring Tunic, and the reason of that is that we run a lot of uh, a lot of copies of Steelblade Sand, and you want that one resource every three turns because with this deck, even though it sounds weird, you want the game to actually drag out. So you do get the full value of your repeating gore belchings, but we will catch on that later. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And of course, probably the best piece of equipment for Dorinthia full stop is Reflection Bolsters, and it's amazing that it's just a, a, a common card. This is a good in, like showcase of like how a common card, it's not just all legendary. I know we've got quite a few legendaries in this, in this list, but the, honestly, if you don't have any of the other stuff, I mean, Refraction Bolt is funny. I don't think you can really do Dorinthia justice or properly without it, right? Yeah, a Refraction Bolt is a 100% Dorinthia Dawnblade card. You love that. Um, you will, I think you will always run it if you're running Dawnblade with Dorinthia. I, don't, I cannot see any reason or any card get printed on boots that's going to be better than Refraction Bolters. Yeah, no, that's fair. And just on a quick note, really, out of all the legendaries that you would have to sort of grab and pick up, right, what would you say that the, the, the order of um, picking up those cards would be in terms of you're going to be a new player, you want to pick up Drinthia, you like the look of it, you've got money to get something for this, you know, for this period, which one would you be saying, I'd, I'd go, turn around and grab that first? Probably priority one has to be Braves, Brave for Bracers. That has to be the most important card because it's by far the best slot. And after that, the only card I think that's super relevant, it's Tunic. It's Fiendel Spring Tunic. Apart from that, I mean, even if you do not have Tunic running, the other chest equipment is fine. I, I don't think it's too bad. And everything else is pretty replaceable. You don't really care about any other equipment if you are looking to play Dorinthia. Yeah, no, that's cool. But at the same time, if you do happen to pick yourself up a uh, Find Our Spring Tunic and a Crown of Providence, I mean, just in the nature of their generic legendaries, um, you know, they're they're probably better in the bigger long run of the, the game of Flesh and Blood. But if you really wanted to just hone in specifically, I want to get to anything going. Yeah, I, I would, I, I'd, I'd totally agree with that. All right, let's get into the deck. So, uh, I don't even know where to really sort of begin with. Yeah, what do you? What would you say is a good starting point on uh, Drinthia to sort of unpack this this deck? Okay, so the, I think the first thing to notice is that we are not running too many reactions. We are just running a few of them, and we don't have any three copies of something because we want to have all the. Diff we don't want to be locked because. Something that happens a lot with Dorinthia is that if something is not good and you get a second copy of it, it's pretty bad. Mm. And the most important example with that is Iron Song Response. Whenever Iron Song Response is good, it's great. Whenever Iron Song Response is bad, it's horrible. If the opponent is not blocking and you have one Iron Song Response that stayed in your hand and went into Arsenal and you got a second copy, it's the worst position to be in as a Dorinthia player on a lot of matchups. That's why we don't want any of our reactions to be more than a two of. Mm. That's the idea behind it, at least. I hear you. I hear you. So, and, uh, oh, go on. Sorry. Yeah, and, so, and the other thing is that the Dauntless and Plow Through have to be one of the stronger non attacks at the moment because it's pretty easy for them to be one for force. Plow through, first of all, because most of the decks at the moment, especially Ranger, use their attacks to block. So it's pretty easy for plow through to be a one for four, which is super relevant with Dorinthia to have that plus one to being a breaking point. And the same somewhat goes with Dauntless because 
a lot of people are packing a lot of defense reactions because of Zali and Rangers and stuff. And if they see a Dorinthia player across the board, they will just side in all these cards. Having Dauntless to somewhat make it harder for them to play their sink belows and their unmovables and stuff like that, it's really important to mess around with their, you know, blocking curve. Mm, yeah, no, that's that, that's uh, great, awesome. So um, that's since you touched on to the uh, attack reaction stuff as well, the alpha two alpha bloods. I mean, I mean, alpha blood, very staple cards in Crucible. Or it's a solid, solid card. Puncture is kind of a new one. I don't know. I know that a lot of people before will be talking about um, when this card came out in Dynasty, how much of an impact it's made. I suppose really, I haven't really touched on it myself that much, but having that piercing one is such a great effect, I imagine. It, it's also great. Only the threat of Puncture sometimes is super relevant. And also having access in this card in your deck in order to be able to fetch that with Singing Steel Blade. Mm. Because what happens a lot of times with Dorinthia is because the opponent does not want to trigger Reprise, so they don't want to block with cards from hand, sometimes they might block a Dome Blade for five only with equipment. And Punctuate is insane there because it, it's pretty easy for it to give the plus one value, and also it's pretty great into all time, which is probably one of the hardest matches. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Only two copies of, is it again just to... Just to smooth out that consistency. Yes, because, because from the other hand, for instance, Rangers n almost never block with equipment, so it's pretty much a blank card versus Rangers, just one for three. So, And you don't have the pool big enough to be able to swap out for the slightly better reactions, so we just put everything in. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. And then uh, the Sharp and Steel, I mean. Oh, zero three, good simple pump. Ah, the Sigil of Solace, interesting. The idea here is that okay, the if you haven't uh, figured out these already, the thing with Gore Belting is that when you play Gore Belting, because the only other attack in your deck is Rouse of the Ancients, it will look through your deck for the first copy of Rouse of the Ancients, and that will get banished, and you will attack for seven, which is huge. After that, you want to get a strategic planning and actually put the gore belching back into your deck and either wait for the second cycle or shuffle with Singing Steel Blade to get the second copy and do that again. All this game plan, a lot of times, it's pretty slow, so you want the game to drag out. That's why in their somewhat reaction slot, because on the Sigil of Sola slot, you see a lot of Dorinthia players running more offensive stuff. We do have the Sigil of Solas because we want the game to drag out. And it's a great bluffing mechanic as Dorinthia. <laughs> yeah. Because when you attack with, for instance, Warrior's Valor into Don't Bleed Attack, one floating, one card in hand, one card in Arsenal. And you have a Sigil of Solas and a defense reaction in Arsenal. And the opponent doesn't know. And the opponent's like, okay, I take the hit. There is no way I can block out the six power Don't Bleed with one card in hand and one card in Arsenal. And you just go... Okay, I attack with the Dome Blade again, just play Sigil of Solas, I gain three. Now, <laughs> and I, I did my thing. Yeah. And you didn't know because, you know, it's great to have that access to that as a warrior player. Yeah, no, that's really cool. It really does hop back into the Crucible War sort of like era. And I know that Sigil of Solas was played when, da when it was the Dash and Dory meta, um, being able to just have that sort of, like you said, the, the sort of trickery and being able to have that sort of pace to keep keep the game going. Um, Spores of War and Spills still play Supremacy. Again, two cards. I just don't think you can play the game of um, Dawnblade uh, Dorinthia without them, giving them, you know, go again plus two with the Spoils of War. And with Steel Blade Supremacy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> cards just outright cracked if it's fair i think it's actually this card's fairly pretty fair because it's got so much like like i think it's just well it's such a, such a cool well designed card it doesn't give anything go again you've got to work for this card but if it works whoa, you know payoff's huge uh the one stroke of foresight again imagine it's just a great uh just, just fill in that slot of um attack reactions right a stroke of foresight is slightly better in this deck because it can actually help 
go faster into finding the first copy of Gore Belching or afterwards finding the copy of strategic planning and stuff. So Stroke for Foresight is slightly better mm. than average in this deck, but it's still pretty mediocre, so we just run one copy. Sure. And then you got your, your complete nine copy of Warrior's Valor. Yeah. Warrior's Valor is Drinthia. <laughs> it's like... exactly. Yeah, I think it's probably the best card. It's exactly what you're looking to do. Threaten go again and swing with the Dawn Bleed. Yeah, absolutely. Sing and Steel Blade. <laughs> It's probably it's 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 got to be like one of the strongest. It's got to be with the strongest reaction in the game. It's just basically plus one ch tutor. This the ch tutor is just just crazy, right? And also the uh, great thing with seeing Steel Blade is if you have a lot of different cards, it actually widens your horizon about what you can fetch a lot. Mm. I mean, that's why you will also see in the sideboard that just the one copy of Route or one copy of Red over Power, having access to it via Singing Steel Blade gives you a lot of flexibility, which is really important for a deck like Dorinthia. Yeah, no, that's so cool. And then, like, I think that just harps on to the what you were saying. We've got the one copy of Twinning Blade just to have that ability to, you know... If all else fails, you could go, ah, oh, you know, the second attack come in. It was like super hyper blocks and you go, yeah, but like, especially if you have a attack with a go again and then you attack and if it has somehow you give that a go again and everyone's going, oh God, you know, winning blade. It's cool, bro. <laughs> Such a cool. Game. I mean, it's a lot of times how you win games. Twinning Blade is a lot of times how you win games with Dorinthia because the opponent makes a horrible block because of Twinning Blade. Yeah, Twinning, Twinning Blade <laughs> is um, is not fun when you get caught out with that. <laughs> Glint, ah, again, Glint. It's the it's just a, such an amazing card to give. You know, it's everything you want. Give it a go again. Prize draw card, crazy hit and run. Yeah, precision press. I, I take it the hit and run, precision press are your best blue block three has meaningful text cards. Yes, yes, and it's pretty relevant towards the because this game, this deck, a lot of times cycles through each deck, so it's great to have on the second cycle cards that give unconditional go again. So when you want to set up the turn with Gore Belting, you can actually go, you know, pitch a blue, precision press into Dawn Blade, the opponent blocks for six because he's expecting a reaction or something, and you're like, yeah, okay, Gore Belting for seven. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's so cool. And then your rounds the Ancients are Gore, Bel Gore Belch food, right? <laughs> you got, it's like, your, it's like your ammo, Gore Belch ammo, that's it. Exactly. You got three shots, no, four shots, no, three, four? Three, three, three you shots. Have three yeah, shots. Yeah. yeah, you got three shots, and I think that's just really cool when you just play it like go belching. Ding, there's one rouse the ancients gone. Okay, let's get ready to go again. And it's just such a, it's it's such a spike shot move, <laughs> but it's so satisfying pulling off when you do it. It's also the the look on your opponent's face has to be the reason to play this deck. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. The first time you go like, okay, spoils of war into Dawn Blade, and the opponent's like, okay, I'm blocked for eight. There is no way you can do anything now. Haha, <laughs> girl belting for seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And then the strategic planning again, another card. It's just uh, that's your that's the re that's you reloading. Your so you got Rousey Ancients is the ammo. Strategic planning is the reload. <laughs> And gore belching is the bullet. <laughs> it's it perfectly. That's that's the whole the perfect description of this deck. Perfect. Uh, it's it's um it's 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 really cool. Now, before we go any sort of further, right? Someone's going to ask why, <laughs> why, <laughs> why would you put in um seven cards for the trick, right? Why would you go? Is why would you put in seven cards to do this trick? Would I just not want to just do my usual thing and then being able to just play out a big attack after it? Right? Why? Why gore belching of all the cards? Okay, so as it is the case most of the time with Dorinthia, the core package of the deck it's pretty similar. I mean, you know the good cards, and you have a little small package about what else you want to do. So most people just add 
cards, meaning attacks, mm -hmm. that are great when you do have that unconditional go again. So we've seen stuff from Nourishing Emptiness, Snatch, Command and Conquer, Enlightened Strike, everything. We, we've seen everything. The reason to pick Gore Belting over all these other things is, first of all, there is nothing that can compare to the value of attacking with a single card for seven. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the maths are just way off the charts. If you manage to fully utilize a hand and do something like uh, Serpent Steel into Spoils of War, into Attack with Dawnblade, the opponent blocks with their whole hand to play around the, the reaction, and there you go, Gore Belting. The, the numbers behind these turns are enormous. Mm. Okay, so uh, of course, though, the drawback is that there is only a single copy of Gore Belting, but there is a new card that got printed in Outsiders. I don't know if you heard about that card called Codex of Frality. <laughs> Do you know about this card? <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody heard of this card? I don't know. Oh my days. If you if yeah, that'll be funny as just to go, cool. Just put that back in. You just reloaded it for me. You, you just need to never make the mistake versus a ranger or assassin to block with Rouse of the Ancients. And that sometimes that might be a drawback because if a Rouse of the Ancients actually goes to your discard pile, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, whenever the opponent plays a Codex of Frality and most of the time you're forced to block, you can just swing back for six with a single card, with a single card that they give you in Arsenal. And a lot of times that's good enough tempo to keep them on the back foot, mm. which is pretty relevant. I love it. It's such a cool, it's such a cool concept. Now, when it, does it get to that point where obviously, you know, well, you've only got three shots, but then it's weird, right? You've always got three shots, so pretty much most cards anyway. Well, no, Codex of Frenity does push that. <laughs> does push that over the limit for some, some other things. But uh, I suppose having this many copies of the cards to fulfill its role does that does it what does it stack up just like on a, a you know on a real critical like real level does it does it stack up well i know that the numbers are crazy in Bull, gold belching but seven cards is it, is it much the thing is that uh, the blue cards, the thing with blue cards in Flesh and Blood is gener in general is that it's not most of the time a huge drawback to have a specific blue card. Because most of the time you're looking to pitch a blue card in your turn either way. Yeah, that's true. So it's not a huge drawback to put in your deck slightly worse blue cards the biggest drawback is that they block for two, okay? That, that's yeah. a real issue, but it's not a huge one because most of the time you're looking to keep a blue in order to do stuff in your turn either way. So mm -hmm. the drawback is even smaller. And also, after you played your first copy of Gore Belting, the turn of going, pitching something into strategic planning, into Dawn Blade attack, it's not horrible. Oh, yeah. I mean... It's not horrible because you still get to replace a card. You put a good card back into your deck. I mean, yeah, it's a ponderous token. It's it's like you created a ponder token, and sometimes that's even more relevant. Actually, having a ponder like token, so it, it's not a huge drawback. Oh, it's funny. not a huge drawback. I take it strategic planning is actually quite a tricky one because it's actually a card you probably like, if you've got Gorbelchen in 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 the bin, right? And you've got strategic planning. It's actually a playable blue, and you've got to try and go. Hmm, how am I going to do? Like you know, you've got to sort of feel like you've got to take a turn off in a way because this is probably you know because it's the blue card. It might be your blue card in your hand in that moment to actually play the like your turn, and then you then it's actually strug you struggle to actually go. But I I need to play this to get the gold pelching out. But I also need to pitch this card in order to play the game in this in this moment. The, the thing is that if the game is versus, you know, it's really heavy on tempo at the moment and you really want to push as much damage as possible, it's not like it's the end of the world pitching the 
the strategic planning because you have three copies because you might get a second cycle at some point so mm. it's not the end of the world not it's not like oh i got the strategic planning i need to play it otherwise you know the whole thing is screwed no you can just you know keep doing your normal block with uh, the hit and run blue to get the full value of block three and then pitch the strategic plan in your turn to do your stuff. It's still it's still a blue. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. Um, uh, yeah, no, that's fair. So you don't, it's not like you got it, got to play it. Just just wait. Well, Belching is, uh, is a patient. It's a patient card. When it's ready, <laughs> you'll deal seven. Well, we've got a pretty hefty sideboard and that's probably and i like to see a big hefty sideboards because that tells me that actually this main board is what you generally would take overall right and yeah sideboard you've got quite a few cards for different matchups and what the hell there's a jubile in here right so <laughs> <laughs> let's start this off right um there's quite a few cards in here uh, I don't really know. Everyone's got their ways of doing the sideboard, so would it be all right if I leave this with you to sort of unpack why the sideboard yeah, has got what it is? So most of them, these are the cards that are not relevant into every matchup. That's why they are on the sideboard. So the in most matchups, you do want the defensive package. As the meta is right now, in most matchups, you do like the red Steel Bleed Sands and the yellow Steel Bleed Sands. And actually, these cards are great in order to drag the game out because they block so well. And also, it's one of the ways to play around the big dominate attacks of uh, Azalea. Mm. So that's why we want the biggest defense reaction we have access to. And also... Steel Bleed Sand is a great card, and it's insanely good that it can be paid off with Tunic. Yeah, yeah, it's a, the value of that card is is crackers. And I remember being as like a just playing as a Bolton and feeling, God, I feel so strong having um, Soul Shield, and that costs two, two for six, and this mm. is like one for six. One for six is the on the rate of that is is insane. Also, the thing is that sometimes it's pretty relevant with this deck because a lot of games, a lot of games with some non-ranger decks, maybe versus assassins or decks like that, games might drag out a lot. So actually having more value into every single card, it's pretty relevant for fatigue reasons. Because Dorinthia, Dawnblade is so efficient that you are not so bad at playing, you know, a more of a slower fatigue style game. Because some games might drag out to this point. Mm. Okay, cool. So, so yes. the overpower and route package is probably for the more defensive decks, meaning mostly Oldheim and stuff and Guardians, because you want that meat, that raw power of a single card to, you know... Overpower is raw power. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, to be able to push over damage. And the thing with route is that it's super relevant that just a single copy is effectively four copies with Singing Steel Blade. Mm. That's why it's only a single one. And the run-through and Glistening Steel Blade package is on the complete opposite of the spectrum. If you face off something like Ninja or something really fast, you want these cards to actually punish the opponent of uh, if he wants to play the no-block game, which is a pretty real strategy versus the Rinthia. Mm. Oh, yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. So, what about um, what about heroes like Dromai? And that's, again, that's a tricky one because knowing what sort of style Dromai is going down, where it's just this super red line in your face, ravelous rabble package, or the more controlly style that Jamie Faulkner populated with lots of dragons. Well, well, versus Dromai, it's one of those heroes at the moment that you, exactly as you said, you're not sure what they're going to do. So you need to be ready to expect them to be a dragon deck. Yeah. So my idea would be to, you need the glistening steel blades, you need the run-throughs to kill dragons efficiently, so you want to be able to do the slower game plan versus the Dromai. Yeah. If they are on the aggressive deck, I mean, Dawnblade is pretty great when it's not <laughs> never blocked. <laughs> yeah, it is true. I mean, if you, if you just don't, if you let Dorinthia just roll, turns into literally a ramp it's literally ramp it's like, okay it's just literally getting worse <laughs> um so the the one copy of iron song determination and uh winning blade what, what's the what, what are they throwing in for 
Twinning Blade is actually the second copy of Twinning Blade. So you always want at least one copy of Twinning Blade in your deck. So because the circumstances might be so you want to fetch it with Singing Steel Blade. So you want to have access to at least one copy in your deck. But there are a lot of matchups that you probably aren't going to use that. So that's why the second copy of Twinning Blade is in the sideboard rather than the main deck. You need it in decks versus Guardians or versus decks that you expect they will block a lot or Das or something like that. That's where you need the second copy. Understood. And yeah, come on. <laughs> 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 no, I was gonna say it, you need to have that copy of just to be able to just sling it out there and just go right. Your your block your block is terrible, and I'm just gonna punish you for it, basically more of that. Exactly. And the the one copy of Iron Song Determinations, okay, there might be some Dorinthia players watching that are like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Iron Song Determination is the best card! Why how can you only have one copy? That's true, but because we have committed a lot of cards into defensive stuff, like six copies of Steel Blade Sun and three copies of Sigil of Solas, most of our games do not end super fast. We We never... Most of the time, we do not have these explosive turns where we go, you know, uh, spoils of war and still made supremacy. So you iron some determination into pizza blue and you have a reaction in arson and you have a reaction in hand and you destroy them. Most of the time, that's not the case with this deck because we have committed a lot of cards into the defensive aspect of the game. So we only want the one copy, the single copy, because the effect is actually really powerful to have the option to stack it or keep it in Arsenal until you get a pretty powerful turn. But we never want a second copy. We almost never want a second copy because it might get stuck, because we are a bit of a slower deck with the whole girl belts in package. Yeah, no, that's cool. Right, well, that's that's really cool. I like, to, I like that this is a really cool um, sort of toolkit to work around with lots of different hero play styles. Ah, find all. Someone's gonna say, bro, 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 I ain't got I can't I can't get a loan out for this. I mean this card is super replaceable. It's not like it's relevant, but the thing is if you're a slow deck that's looking forward in some matchups to go slow and do a second and third cycle, having heard of final just makes sense. It does. I don't think it's super relevant. I don't think you need that. It's also pretty weird in a lot of matchups because it's the seventh blue that you are not looking to block with and mm. that sometimes might clank up. So it's super replaceable, but sometimes, you know, it might give you one or two extra HP, which is which is okay, which yeah. is great for a deck that's looking to play slow. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so if you do have a copy, at what point, and you'd put this in if you're going to go into a much more longer, slower matchups to just get that health increment. If you don't own one, would you safely say that it's just a blue, find a blue block three? Um, that just seems to make sense, but blue block three. Any blue block three makes sense, or if you, if you, it's probably also a blue that you want versus Islander. The thing is that Islander is not super popular at the moment. So you could easily cut Heart of Fiendal and maybe something else like the second copy of Run Through or something like that to add some copies of Oasis Respite regarding on how much Kano and uh, Azala you're expecting at your local meta. Yeah. Oasis Respite is a real card in this deck. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Um, and also just uh, just not any old blue. Like mo do an attack reaction blue or, or non -attack, yeah. not, not an attack. Otherwise, Gore Belchin is just going to fall off fast okay so no rune no rune is no rune right wizards that's that's that yeah is there is, <laughs> is it all three against both icelander and um and kano is it all three or is it no, no versus versus islander you are only putting the hood and the boots you're actually keeping the brave for bracers gloves simply for block reasons simply mm -hmm. for the armor but versus Kano, I think this deck has a really hard time to lose versus Kano. Yeah. Because, you because can... Jubil is insane, and the third copy of Arcane Barrier just locks Kano almost out of the game, which is pretty relevant. I mean, just a single copy of a card to completely negate one matchup, it's, it's good enough. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, would, you, would you run 
any of this. So I'll tell you what, something I've been forgetting, which is naughty of me. Would you run a rune, a null rune uh, gloves or hood or any null rune against the viscerai or the briars or anything? Because you're looking to play slow versus Viserai, I would 100% probably cut Crown of Providence to run the Nulrun Hood. Yeah. Versus Briar, I don't think I would want to do something like that. Probably versus Briar, it's one of the few matchups where you want the game to end pretty fast mm -hmm. because <laughs> if you give Briar the time to, you know, mountains and get her embodiments and stuff like that. Your your one card seven gore belting is nothing to them. <laughs> <laughs> we got three of them. <laughs> Every single card in my deck is zero for seven with a single card. What are you talking about? Yeah, right. <laughs> right, and then I tell you what, really cool Jubil Spellbane, uh, a card that's going to be coming out in Cold Fall in the Road to National season. Go, go, your goss. Let everyone memed on this card and say, why is this card a first place Coldfield prize? I feel like I'm, I'm the only person that's happy that is happening. You're going to sell it to everyone and we're going to make this card go to the moon, right? Yes. I mean, first of all, this card is insane. Uh, if Runeblades, <laughs> if. If. In about two months when Runeblade will be the new meta of the game <laughs> with the new set <laughs> coming out. I mean, to be... I mean, okay, let's talk about Dawnblade. You want it to be able to get go again and hit twice in order to maybe, in order to get a plus run, okay, to get at least a plus run. Mm -hmm. To build does 75% of that with just hitting the first time. Right. You don't care about go again. You don't care about, I mean, the rate of Jubil Spellbane, if the opponent is dealing arcane damage every single turn, is insane. If you guys haven't played Jubil versus Islander, I mean, the rate that you get from Jubil is insane. You just attack for 9, they need to block 9, otherwise the 9 suddenly turns into 10, because suddenly you get the 1 free AB, you know, the free spell void token, which is insane. The rate is insane. If I don't know, same. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if some guy like that pops out again. Yeah. Comes back into the meta game. No, I totally. I, I. I agree. I think a lot of people are like. I think this card is a sleeper. I think. I think LSS know that people are going to be sleeping on this card, and um, when this card, when the road to national season comes out, and these cards are ten pound because no one cares, right? I'm picking one up, right? I'm straight away picking one up because if you're a warrior player, and I might be talking, I tell you what, this this may age badly, right? <laughs> this may age badly. Yeah, five five dollar gold foil to be able, nobody wants it. No, it's probably hard. <laughs> I, I think this card has got some future potential. The fact that you're able. To, the only thing I think is kind of a little bit like, hmm, but maybe they thought this through, right? Is that if you don't control a Spellbane Aegis, create one. Like, I think they probably would have been pretty darn broke if it didn't have that text and you were able to stack up like a block forever. It's like literally spectral shield every time you hit a weapon, you know, for Arcane specifically. Um, that might be a little bit crackers. But I agree. I agree. And and also there is something that we are missing because of the area weapons that they are so because they are so powerful. Mm. The rate of a weapon paying one to attack for three is pretty great. Mm. I mean, it's pretty great already. It's not like you need something extra like the dawn blade, damage wise. You you don't paying one paying two resources to attack for six for free without wasting any card, it's, it's insane if you manage to pull that off in a turn. You, you don't really need the extra plus one counter. Well, I love it. And uh, I take it you'd throw this in against anyone that's thrown Arcane at you. Or, mm, well. I haven't, pl I haven't played with a Viserai with this deck yet, but I'm guessing... I don't, I don't think you would. I, I, honestly, bro, I don't think you should take I, I this. I don't think I would because... I guess it's a race matchup again, and you want you just want the game to end quickly. You don't want to drag out the game. Yeah, um, maybe that one arcane, maybe may make a difference, but it just feels. I'm not. I'm not sure. It's worth a go, actually. I tell you what, we should have yeah. a game. I'll, get, I'll give you a game. 
um see see what happens but it just feels like really you just want to push that dawn blade counter you just need to put the pressure on you need to get that race going um yeah dimensity versus viscera is definitely a temp like uh, two people vying for the for tempo for having more hand than the other person and if the other person is just beating down the other one someone they have to there's a moment where one of the heroes have to just take it on the chin because their turn is better and that is how that game always works forever and ever there's a time where i sit there and go i am not blocking your dawn blade bring it on because i'm going to throw all my mighty power at you and then you're going to be like i am not blocking this movie in sky's turn and you're like you're bro you're nuts the secret, the five billion IQ play with this deck is that, okay, the Visera has a bad turn and it's like, oh, I need to reset the Dawn Blade. And you go spoils of war into attack with Dawn Blade with two counters for seven. And you're like, okay, ha, I got you. I block for 12. There is nothing you can do. I belsing you. Oh, no. I go belsing you. I keep the tempo. Nobody can snatch the tempo back from me. <laughs> it's me. Oh, cool belching. Hey, you reset the Dawn Blade, how bad? Yeah. For your, <laughs> this is the price of resetting the, the, the Dawn counter. Take seven damage. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I remember this feels so much like um, the, the back in the day of Crucible Met, I, was, I used to talk to a chap called Tom Penny, and he made this um pivot sort of dorinthia deck was almost kind of on the same you're on the same sort of vibe of things where he'll be like yeah okay dawn blade into you're gonna block and then dawn blade and then you go yeah and then i'll just uh just play a zero for four snatch you know you're like oh you're like you overcommitted on that so i would I, i'm just gonna get i'm just gonna get the value in on, on an attack action card and you just be I can't, you know what I mean? It's just like, haha, it feels very much like that in that same sort of vein again. Overcommitting on the, the, the scary threat of Dawnblade and actually you're just tricking them. So making, Dawn, making you feel like Dawnblade is actually scary. And really, you go have a zero for seven, three. It's like, shh, God, you know, taking a punch for face for nothing. It feels awful. But this is what makes this deck and the, so much fun to play, right? Classic warrior. Um, bait and switch oh you think you know but you don't ah, all that uh it's, it's awesome so yorgos thank you so much for showing off this another awesome amazing deck tech i hope um well i hope you all enjoy it and let us know if you want yorgos back or yorgos would you be back? i would love to be back i have way more Trust being ideas that solve the meta that, you know, <laughs> okay, the Doom series are here, top eight, Dorinthia with Gore Belching. Somebody sees the video and finds the truth. Yeah, that's it. We'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks so much, dude. Cheers, everyone. Take the deck, deck links below. Go have fun. Take it to your local armory and uh, have fun watching Pro Tour. See you later. <laughs>